But from day one, I remain focused. Yeah. If you like, say whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, me, yeah. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I will remain focused. You are the one that you will be giving yourself BP. Correct. High BP. Correct. Because what they wish yeah. is not what will happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yabelo has now indicted himself. As we speak, the diabolic charm he used to escape when the EFCC raided his environment and his house has now been exposed. And as much as we as we speak, he has now come out to confess. You know, this Yabelo's case has now shown me that a politician will be so brave to come out even when the EFCC has declared that he did a fraudulent activity. He will be bold enough to entertain and even hold a, a press conference and begin to reveal exactly and even stand on the status quo that he did not do anything, that even the EFCC had not even sent him a memo or an invite to come. I'm going to be showing the video shortly for you to see the diabolic means that he, you know, Yabelo used in escaping in his environment. A lot of persons are curious and inquisitive of knowing the reason and how Yabelo had to escape. You know, see, if EFCC is coming for you, they know how to get you. But in the case of Yabelo, how did he even leave the environment that was surrounded by the EFCC personnel? But before I begin to show you that video and also show you what Yabelo had to confess and how he has revealed his status quo concerning the all the fraudulent activities he had in Kogi State and what he even did recently that showed that this young man has a lot of fraudulent activities attached to him. Watch this video and listen attentively to all the statements made. And when we come back, we'll begin to dissect and continue and I you know exactly show you the diabolic means Yabelo used in escaping when the FCC raided his environment. Well, uh, good morning and thank you for having me. Uh, Mr. Abati, just when you thought that the drama on the day they went to arrest him was enough embarrassment. You had another one again yesterday. What happened yesterday was like a prosecutor in court doing his opening address in the view of prosecuting the matter. And who is the judge? In yesterday, it was the pressman. That same privilege, Yaebele does not have to also state his own case, so we can call it a complete trial by the media. This is one of the many reasons why people tend to ask the question, is the commission actually intending to prosecute or the commission is indirectly giving opportunity for the accused to escape? Because this same thing is like it has always been playing in EFCC's approach to prosecution, which has led to so many high-profile cases going out of hand. Like, for example... If you give a forensic analysis of what he said in the press yesterday, a, a right-thinking member of the society will say this was a planned script to give Yayabelo an escape route. Why did I say that? One, the trial in Nigeria is a trial not by jury. Even trial by jury is not a trial by the media. Two, having submitted a charge to court with the evidence that he has been granted order of substitution and he has, sub and he has served Yaebelo through his counsel, he has submitted to the jurisdiction of the court. Was there any need to hold a meeting and begin to argue the substance of the charge? Three, some of the things he said yesterday has created more doubt and fed into the allegation of Yaebelo that he will not seek justice because it was a persecution. Otherwise, let me tell you one or two things, uh, Mr. Abati. One in the press yesterday, he said he accorded a special privilege and respect to Yayabello. That same privilege was not given Boboriski. That same privilege was not given others. That he called him. The procedure in EFCC is, except if they change it, they will write you. That's why there will be that evidence that you were invited because it falls on the fulcrum of the commencement of a trial, that the accused must have been invited for investigation. He even said yesterday that we don't need to even take his statement in order to charge him. That means you've already done what you needed to do. So why is the insistence to arrest him? And then when you open your mouth before the press to tell them that you said, okay, you come through the bag, I'll ensure you come to my office, then the operators will come to my office, the investigators, and then they will investigate. You are trying to say that as chairman, you can breach protocol and procedure that you set. Does everybody that you invite in that commission get the same privilege? Now, is the, is the very concept of everybody is equal before the law and nobody is above the law applied? Three, he now went ahead to talk about the substance 
in the church sheet. So what was he actually trying to achieve? He wants to convict Yayabello before the media so that if the substance of the church eventually fails, the media can then build a narrative that the judge was bribed or that nobody wants EFCC to succeed. There is no country of the world where you take that path, you will end up succeeding. The energy can only be channeled in one direction. Unfortunately, EFCC chose to do it through the media rather than in court. The question that I beg for answer is, when will EFCC actually commence criminal trial with the sole purpose of getting the defendant convicted? I believe you have watched carefully and you have listened attentively when this man was speaking, nobody's above the law. Now, the question that is that is coming in the minds of persons are, is Yabelu, the former governor of Kogi State, is he above the law? Tell you how drastic EFCC has taken this case. As we speak, the EFCC chairman has stated that I will resign if Yabelu is not prosecuted. That he has sworn that he will resign his office if Yabelu has not been prosecuted. Because you cannot do to Mr. A and leave Mr. B scot free. Now... Yabelo is not above the law. Now, that is the more reason why the EFCC chairman is stating that if Yabelo is not prosecuted, you know, that he's going to resign. When questions begin to ponder in the minds of Nigerians and even diaspora, they begin to ask, who is Yabelo? What is even giving him the guts, the, the guts and the mindset of escaping and even standing on the right that he did what he did? To tell you that Yabelo, something is really, really working for him. Now, as we speak, the diabolic means a now surfaced as you can see on your screen you see the diabolic means Yabelo used in escaping now this is a man in kogi state who they have started you know supporters of Yabelo came together begin to conjure whatsoever just for the fact that ESCC cannot read or catch Yabelo the question is why is Yabelo bringing in diabolic means into a matter that he's supposed to just go and answer that is to show that he is not upright as a politician and this is the reason why the, the, the ESCC chairman has not stated that even if Yabelo is hiding, no matter where he goes, no matter what happens, that if Yabelo is not being caught, that he's going to resign from his office. And this is like a challenge because if Yabelo is not prosecuted, then in other politicians will take suit of what is happening. Now, I believe you have listened attentively to all what has been transpiring over this Yabelo issue. What is your reaction towards it? What do you feel the ESCC should do? What is the drastic measure to make sure they curtail this fraudulent activity so that politicians will not continue to embezzle funds even when the country is running? into deficit financing even when the masses cannot even fit three square minutes they react on the comment section don't forget to share this video like this video and do well to always hit the subscribe button so that you get notified when i drop more trending videos